Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is uh, a great honor and pleasure for me uh, to invite uh, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, uh, Mr. Ahmed, uh, here uh, with us um, today. Uh, the Prime Minister uh, is already a truly uh, historical um, person uh, in uh, Ethiopia. Those that have followed Ethiopia uh, for decades, more have happened in the last months with this prime minister than has happened in decades. So there is peace with Eritrea. Uh, there are important economic reforms uh, in Ethiopia. There are important political reforms. Following the prime minister's breakthrough um, with Asmara, there was also peace established between Somalia and Eritrea, Djibouti and Eritrea, and the Prime Minister called in the parties also in South Sudan, Riek Machar and Salva Kiir, and got them to talk together. A great achievement in, its, in itself, I have to say. There is so much hope now related to Eritrea. There are thousands of political prisoners freed. The diaspora is coming back, and uh, there is so much support uh, for you personally and for your government, Mr. Prime Minister. We're really looking forward to hear your message uh, to uh, the world community today. So welcome, my friend. Thank you, dear brother, uh, for the brand. Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for the warm welcome in this cold winter. I am honored to be with you for the first time in Davos, and I am most grateful for the opportunity to share with you Ethiopians' renewed vision and sustained commitment to positive reforms. Ethiopia is today among the fastest growing economies in the world, consistently averaging over 9% growth in the last decade. Ethiopia's GDP has multiplied tenfold in 25 years. Poverty has been halved, and educational enrollment has markedly increased. Significant investment in infrastructure has contributed to the growth and attracted foreign direct investment, making Ethiopia one of the leading foreign direct investment destinations in Africa. These are tremendous success and reflect the real commitment of our government and our people to development and progress. Our challenges, however, remain formidable. To reform and to enforce our upward trajectory and achieve even more rapid and sustainable growth, Ethiopia has embarked on a comprehensive reform process since last April, which cuts across politics, economics, and society. We aim to establish a virtuous cycle between these elements and among us, our partners, to enable us to meet our challenges in a mutually profitable manner. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to explain this virtuous path of reform. And our reform is deeply rooted in the philosophy of Maddamer, an Amharic word for coming together or synergy. Maddamer is a historic reform to organic change and is building on the gains of the past while reminding us of our rich heritage. It also reflects on modern realities, strengthening the synergy in politics, economics, technology, and society. Ethiopia is indeed undergoing a period of political and economic renaissance. The Maddamer reform is people-centered, and has three interdependent pillars. The first pillar is a vibrant democracy. The second one is economic 
vitality. And the third pillar is regional integration and openness to the world. Today, we meet at a time of great opportunity for Ethiopia and for you. In this spirit of partnership, please allow me to briefly address each of these aspects. On the political front, we are working tirelessly to fulfill the constitutional promise of building a democratic and pluralistic political order based on our first pillar, a vibrant democracy. Guided by this principle, we have acted quickly and decisively. In the past nine months alone, we have released all political prisoners in the thousands. We have also invited individuals and groups based on abroad to return home and join us in a spirit of positive sum, not zero sum politics. We have restored license to independent media, issued an amnesty law, and repealed restrictive laws of the past. We will also have a revised civil society law very soon. We believe it is not possible to sustain growth, attract investment, and allow all Ethiopians to benefit from the growth dividend without embracing democracy and persuading the world to invite, to invest in our economy. In sum, we see democracy and development as interlinked and we have acted decisively on this understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, the second pillar of our reform is economic vitality. We are determined to bring Ethiopia family into the center of the international market. To do so, we will leverage the collective power of our people, especially women and the youth, and build the private sector to drive more inclusive and socially sustainable growth. We cannot hope to progress as a nation and as an economy if we disqualify half of our population from full and equal participation. Women are now occupying key government positions, including the Minister of Defense, Minister of Trade, Minister of Transport, and the newly established Minister of Peace. We have achieved gender parity in our cabinet. We now have the first woman as the president of the Federal Supreme Court, and recently our parliament has elected the first woman head of state in modern Ethiopia. Thank you. This is important progress, but it is not enough. Ethiopia is a large market of over 100 million people, of which 60 million are under the age of 24. With half a million school leavers annually, our core objective is to sustain fast-paced economic growth and to create both more and better jobs. We must create the condition to enable a demographic dividend and to harness the potential of our young and energetic population. To do so, we have to invest in the aspirations of our youth by improving educational standards and create fresh opportunities through careful planning and strategic repositioning. This requires unleashing the potential of the private sector. Here are four steps that we are taking to make this not mere rhetoric but a firm reality. First, we will make it easier for small and medium-sized enterprises to grow and flourish, since they are the engine room of our economy. We are reprioritizing access to credit for SMEs since two-thirds of our SMEs report not having access to finance. Second, we will ease 
and the mainstream regulations needed to start a business and provide a better policy environment. We will make it easier to do business for everyone who wishes to invest in our country. Ethiopia is undergoing significant institutional reforms and is reviewing its investment code, commercial code, and other business regulations to enhance the ease of doing business in Ethiopia and increase our global competitiveness. Third, we will make the private sector an integral part of our economy, as it should be. Ethiopia is committed to reforming its state-owned enterprises and crowding in more private capital. We are committed to opening up the economy to international investors in telecom, logistics, energy, aviation, railways, and industrial parks. This has the added benefit of creating the space to reallocate government expenditure to, to social services. We are confident that international capital and expertise will deliver significant value for Ethiopians and contribute to our development agenda. Fourth, we will continue to foster public-private partnerships as we see this as more than merely a business proposition and a deal to be struck. We see it as the way to build balanced long-term partnership aimed at triggering faster economic growth and profit. At the same time, we will ensure our citizens realize their full potential and live a prosperous, healthy, and safe life. We therefore look to the next generation of public-private partnerships to be more balanced in delivering growth and the yield and representing a fresh way to contemplate the relationship between business and government and offering a shared formula for social and economic growth and inclusiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, the third and fi the final pillar of our renaissance is regional integration and openness to the world. Regional integration and trade will be crucial to the future of our continent, allowing us to grow beyond primary commodities and accelerate our development. Addis Ababa is a seat of the African Union and so must lead by example. Our determination explains our active engagement in discussions on the African continental free trade area and our sense of urgency to finalize Ethiopians' accession to the World Trade Organization. History has demonstrated time and again that neighbors with intimate, rule-based, and a diverse trade and economic relations are unlikely to resort to conflict. That is why we believe integration must be viewed not just as an economic project, but also as crucial to securing peace and reconciliation in the Horn of Africa. The adage from our ancestor is, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. In this spirit, Ethiopia has ended two decades of military settlement with Eritrea and is enhancing cooperation with neighboring countries and reconfiguring the geopolitics in our region. Ethiopia believes that an Africa at peace with itself can counteract the chaotic push of mass migration. As such, Ethiopia aims to increase the influx of smart capital into African continent. There is a strong case to be made for investing in our continent. Even the most conservative asset allocation of an investment portfolio should prudently consider this option. If just 2% of the 40 trillion USD in OECD pension assets were invested into Africa over the coming five years, it would exceed the total foreign direct investment 
that we have seen in the last five years by more than three times. For investors considering the record of return, this offers higher than average rewards and diversification of risk. For Ethiopia, it would catal catalyze transformation. To realize this great opportunity, we appreciate the fundamental need to de-risk our politics and economics, which would reduce the premiums out by prospective investors. Part of that process is to build trust and confidence and to lead by example. I believe that our record over the last year shows this to be so. Dear friends, let me conclude. Ethiopia has embraced a great vision and embarked on bold reforms, improving the political environment and the business climate is our priority. Building an open society and a vibrant economy is our shared aspiration and our proposition to you, but we must all act fast. Our record over the last nine months should illustrate our resolves. This is an, this is an agenda for action, a blueprint for a model of virtuous and sustainable growth. Looking at what we have accomplished in less than a year, I am optimistic and excited about the opportunities that are ahead. Ethiopians are born runners and we excel in marathons. Take it as a signal of our intention and level of commitment and stamina. Now is our time. Rating agencies forecast, and I quote, that growth will average 8% over 2018 to 2021, making Ethiopia the fastest growing of the sovereign we rate. I say to you, carpe diem, yes, seize the day, but also trust the future. Come and see what we have to offer and invest in our potential. Whether you are an entrepreneur, a CEO, or an industrialist, or just a lover of nature, or history, or beauty, Ethiopia has something for you. I thank you. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Prime Minister. I think you also heard from the warm applause uh, that there is so much uh, goodwill uh, related to your uh, leadership. But as you said, um, it's a marathon, but uh, it has to be also, you have to run uh, fast, and you're good at that. What you don't think about when you come to Addis, if you do run, is the altitude. So uh, uh, for foreigners, uh, it, it's a big challenge. This morning, we had also a session uh, on Ethiopia and uh, your uh, leadership. And one of the um, uh, experienced humanitarians said that when he was in Ethiopia a year ago and asked his people, um, they would say that uh, they would have most loyalty to their tribe than to, they felt like that was their identity, then it was Africa, and then it was Ethiopia. When he was back a month ago, um, the same people said, I know have strongest identity as an Ethiopian, and then African, and then tribe third. How have you managed to change this in seven months? I think other leaders could learn. Maybe even in Europe, huh? <laughs> Some uh, nine months ago, the um, situation in Ethiopia, as you have stated, was very bad. The near possibility of uh, state collapse, mainly due to the government uh, respond to the public political and economic demand pushed the nation into dangerous course. What makes the situation more dangerous was the poor relationship among the leadership. There was misunderstanding, 
mistrust and mutual suspicion among the top, the top leadership. Due to this problem, we collect data from different sources. We analyze using different techniques and mechanisms. And definitely, if you use different sources and different mechanisms to analyze the information, the output cannot be identical. So having or seeing the problem from different perspective, we can't uh, find a solution to solve uh, the problem and to change the situation. Uh, to make long story short, when the situation gets worse, we sat for weeks to discuss and to evaluate as a party. Then we have achieved, uh, finally we have achieved leadership change. Not only leadership change, but also peaceful power transfer, which is a very rare experience in Africa. Right after the change, the new leadership decided to, uh, to, to, to listen from the public the opinion, the grievances, so as to make a communal solution to resolve, to resolve, to resolve the current uh, problem of that time. Then we have discussed with almost all corners of the country. We have uh, traveled and we have discussed with the public to hear their grievances and their uh, demands. Mainly, their demand were uh, they complained about the government, uh, about our indecision, also the widespread uh, injustice, both in politics and economics, as well um, human rights violation. What we did was we didn't undermine the public grievance. We just sat and evaluate all questions which came across the country. Though we prioritize to fix some of the problems in Queens and others in institutional reform. Like I mentioned before, we uh, automatically lifted state of emergency. That was one of the questions of the public. And released thousands of prisoners, uh, including journalists. Today, we don't have a single journalist in prison, and we are proud of that. That's also rare these days, huh? If, if you are open-minded and open-hearted, you can learn. It's not bad sometimes to learn from Africa as well. <laughs> Anyways, not only this, we also um, invite all opposition party. Uh, we're based abroad. Uh, not only opposition party, but also, also waged armed struggle against uh, the government. Uh, they all are back now. We don't have any opposition party abroad. We're discussing how to change the political landscape and how to make the upcoming election democratic, free, and um, a better one compared to the previous one. These kinds of action change the mind of many Ethiopians, that the hope is there, the, policy, the possibility of change uh, also there. Then automatically, after we have done this quick wins, we jump to uh, institutional reform, including SSR reform, security service reform. There was one of the biggest complaints on security institution, institutions and service. Also, we reduce cabinet from 28 to 20, and we realize gender parity in our cabinet. So by doing so, we could uh, uh, gather most of the extreme toes to the center. But still, we have to do more. We're not um, satisfying on our reform. We have to include all kinds of thoughts to change Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a very great country, and the government must play its great role so as to bring Ethiopia together and to be Ethiopian first. I think you. I am I'm just wondering, Prime Minister, we know that uh, the war uh, with Eritrea has been going on for a long time. And uh, um, Ethiopia has, has no port. It's a huge country. Um, it has 100 million people. But I, I'm just wondering, um, how did you dare uh, just uh, travel up to Asmara, meet with uh, then Yesaya, and then declare uh, peace between those two countries. Weren't you concerned with setbacks? The military would be upset. You know, there is probably a, a lot of people 
uh, e even inside your country uh, questioning uh, this? Coming to Davos is more dangerous than going to Asmara for me. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, there's a big difference, at least in terms of weather. <laughs> <laughs> the most important thing is this I issue. I think you're cordially welcome. Uh -huh. <laughs> the issue of um, conflict in uh, our region, mainly it's um, problems of leaders, ego. There is no tangible reason. When we are together, we can make significant change in our society. When you are apart, both of us are killing each other and losing all the opportunities and begging far to the Western world. So my question to the region is not only uh, to reset the problem, but also economic integration. There is no need to have different army in Ethiopia, in Eritrea, in Djibouti. I don't believe in this. There is no need to have foreign embassy here in Switzerland for each of East African countries. We can, we can share because we're poor. We have to allocate that resource to change the life of our society. That's why I go there and uh, President Isaias and the people of Haiti was welcoming. Things are uh, resolved as you said. And also EGAD as a single market maybe? That's the vision. We are working uh, toward this integration of that region. Uh, and, and you're not, of course, hearing all the, the progress you have made and uh, all the reforms, um, you're not afraid of any setbacks. You're, you're introducing new reforms. Seems like uh, uh, you are on a, a track here. Are you never concerned that uh, uh, there will be forces that want setbacks? Who do you afraid? I'm engaging the public. As long as the public is behind me, I don't afraid and it will make a change. Isn't I think that's a wonderful uh, end to this uh, conversation. I think uh, um, we are very privileged to have you here in Davos, uh, Prime Minister. I think also a uh, lot of business CEOs I see uh, here, and I know you met with them, uh, are uh, very interested in investing uh, in your countries. And I think you're also undertaking a lot of economic uh, reforms. Yeah, there are uh, lots of uh, reforms taking uh, place in Ethiopia, especially opening up the economy. Uh, we are opening state-owned uh, companies, which we have been considering as a commanding heights for years, including Ethiopia Telecom and um, Ethiopian Airlines. Uh, this opening up will bring uh, lots of capital and expertise to Ethiopia, and it will boost the pace of our economy grows, and we are open for any investors. And we're also changing our ease of doing business. Uh, there is a strong team under my office, which is changing lots of hindering factors for investors to come and invest in Ethiopia. Uh, I hope in the next two, three years, we can see the biggest uh, change in investment flow to Ethiopia. Thank you. And uh, you can also count on the World Economic Forum to be a partner in that transformation. Thank you so much. Thank Mr. you very much. <laughs>